Right, just uh, heading out of the old city, um, moving towards what's in front of me is the Mount of Olives. Yeah, just going to be heading out to uh, a few different places today, so uh, it's going to be exciting. We've been in the compound uh, of Al Aqsa uh, most of the time since I've been here, so uh, today I'm going to head out and uh, have a look at what's uh, going on uh, elsewhere. So, I'm going to head over to and possibly the West Bank which is going to be fun and interesting so uh, let's just show you the view that's the view of the Mount of Olives there this is just outside the uh, old city so so we're sort of still in East Jerusalem but we're out of the old city now and uh, there you are the Mount of Olives Cemetery the Jewish Quarter Silvern the Western Wall is that way a lovely day today absolutely beautiful it's about 20 degrees so the weather is absolutely beautiful um, let's have a look there's a mosque over there there's the Mount of Olives just right in front of me as you can see over there they just absolutely zoom. To right, keep a look on the right. Can you see the room of Maryam? Oh, is that, is that yes. one office, one office. okay? So that's the corner, oh, so that's oh. how was. right? The rocks at the bottom there they are very, very old. Uh, okay, here we are. Can you see? Okay, can you see the triple yeah. gate? Oh, yeah, 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 the yeah, triple yeah. of you. If you look right next to the annexed area, you will see one part of the double gate. It's very difficult to see all of it. Can you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You saw the library? Remember yeah. the library? We didn't oh, go in. That. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. the part that's sticking out. That's the library. Okay. Okay. There you can see just the entrance to the temple. So they go up the steps and they walk all the way up to the uh, up to the walls, saying that we've done whatever we can. Whereas these, there, even the preservation of the ruins, they've kind of taken over, and they call it the Ophel. There would be action taken against this individual and anyone of his kind, but instead, what they did. They used that as an excuse to take over more than 60. So we're just at Jabal al muqabbir where the Takbir was recited when Omar came here and uh, the siege or the, the liberation of Jerusalem occurred and he recited the Takbir um, and the Takbir was recited and uh, apparently Jerusalem shook according to the historical accounts from the Christian side and the patriarch of course invited what so had some conditions conditions were met and once the conditions had been met they Omar was told that the leader should come and the leader came and there's a story behind it how he came on his horse but uh, that is a story which uh, you can read up on where his servant was actually riding the horse when he came in and he was on uh, walking with a patched garment uh. so at that time I want you to understand that the Christian army had laid a siege um, around the, uh, the sorry the Muslim army had laid a siege around the Christians were inside and eventually Abu Ubaida ibn Jarrah radiallahu ta'ala anhu he was the leader of the army he had a very diplomatic way of dealing with things and uh, eventually they gave in and they said right and it was winter it was very very cold and they, they gave in after so long saying right we're willing to hand over uh, Jerusalem and its keys with peace but the condition is the leader of the Muslims must come and collect the keys so this is when they tried to send Khalid bin Walid radiallahu they said no we have in our scriptures the signs of the leader who is going to come and thus then they wrote to Umar radiallahu anhu this is the first and only trip Umar radiallahu anhu made so far out and because he was the Khalifa at the time so he comes and he discusses with other Sahaba some said go some said don't go he decided to take the journey and we spoke about it in detail where Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu he sets off 
And when he's coming, he comes to a place called Jabiyah, and where there Abu Ubaidah went and met Umar radiallahu anhu and discussed with him the details of what's going on. And then they presented to Umar radiallahu anhu, he came on a camel. So they presented to him a really fast horse. It was a, 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 one of the best horses possible. And they bought like... Last time, so guys this is the partition wall the apartheid wall built by the zionists it's never happened that we have um, to drove right through and on so this like, side so that's another blessing uh, this is the wall which separates um, it takes a while here um, muslims don't normally come here the, i don't really know of any other the, the west bank that comes here so from where we're going now uh, this is the tomb of rahil 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 was the wife of yaqub alayhi salam the mother of yusuf alayhi salam so we're going to go to the tomb of Rahil. Originally, this is called Masjid Bilal. This has been unfortunately and very sadly converted into a synagogue. And in Judaism, they consider this, some Jews consider this the third holiest site. Um, some Jewish women believe if they can't conceive, they come here to the grave and they pray to the, to the tomb of Rahil and you know, they, they get blessings. So normally it's very busy. A lot of Jews will be praying here as well. And it's sad because it's been converted into a synagogue. But remember, a masjid, we believe it's a masjid. A masjid remains a masjid. We won't be praying there. What we will do, inshallah, is we'll go through. There's a men's section. And a so we're just heading. We're in Bethlehem right now, actually. And we're going to... We've got a good friend here. He can, uh, the tomb of uh, Rahil. Uh, Rahil. Uh, the, yeah. mother, the wife of Yaqub, alayhi salam, and the mother of Yusuf, alayhi salam. And there we are. And... So, uh, here you'll get a lot of Jews, but this is originally known as Masjid Bilal. Yeah. Um, so when we go inside, you'll get a lot of looks and everything which we ignore. Yeah. We go towards the tomb. We're quite recited, used to that yeah, anyway. From recite these. some Quran, yeah. and then we will um, uh, we will come out. Um, Brilliant. Thank you. Thank no you, problem. Wasim. No so yeah, here there we are. Um, of course, it's, there's so much going on here. So I'm, I think I'm going to need one of these hats possibly to go in now because my head's not covered. So let's see. As you can see, we're about to just go in. There's the wall on the left, and this is the men's entrance. And uh, we're just going to go into here. And there's this wall, uh, and there's these guys there. So we're just going to go in and see how it is. A very interesting place, this. It's not originally, but now it seems to be and uh, yeah look at this this worship going on here these fellow jewish people um, doing their worship it's very interesting when you learn about another faith and my knowledge about judaism is very long but um, it's very interesting to, uh, to get acquainted with their belief system So originally this place was known as Al Masjid uh, Bilal ibn Rabah but now of course um, it's a place of significance for uh, where all worship and uh, pray here um, so yeah this was originally a mosque but now it is um, it's a, it's a significant place for our Jewish friends here we have scripture of sorts I mean, my knowledge of Hebrew is limited, although I know a little, but uh, it's, it has similarities to Arabic to a certain extent, but do another section there. I 
अच्छा So here I am at the the wall folks. In Palestine. And this is the separation wall. Here we have it, that's the wall. It's a bit of a dystopia, isn't it? We're taking pictures and, and but the reality is very harsh. This wall um, is a wall which is a sign of oppression, a sign of uh, apartheid. So we're taking pictures, but the reality of this wall is very harsh. It's a reality which is uh, painful um, to say the least, but uh, we're gonna move on now and uh, show you some more. Souvenir shops, lovely souvenirs, so much to buy around here. There's Mary, Joseph, of course. Bethlehem, known in Arabic as Beit Lehem, the house of meat, and in Hebrew, Beit Lehem, the house of bread, is a town in the West Bank situated in the Judean hills, five miles south of Jerusalem. According to the Gospels, Bethlehem was the site of the nativity of Jesus Christ. Christian theology has linked this with the belief that his birth there fulfills the Old Testament prophecy of Israel's future ruler coming from Bethlehem, Ephrata, in Micah. Some modern New Testament scholars believe parts of the Gospel accounts to be later Christians and Jesus was actually born in Nazareth. However, with two millennia of constant usage of the site as the birth of Jesus, this gives it credence that this is the actual site. In the Bible, the city is often referred to as Bethlehem Ephratah or Bethlehem Judah, an ancient settlement. It is possibly mentioned in the Amarna letters, which are 14th century BCE letters found in Tel Amarna in Egypt. But the reading there is uncertain. Bethlehem is first mentioned in the Bible in connection with Rachel, who died on the wayside near there in Genesis. It is the setting for most of the book of Ruth and was the presumed birthplace and certainly the home of Ruth's descendant, King David. There he was anointed king of Israel by the prophet Samuel. The town was fortified by Rehoboam, David's grandson and the first king of Judah after the division of the states between Israel and Judah. During the Jewish return to Palestine after the Babylonian exile, the town was repopulated later. A Roman garrison was there during the second Jewish revolt led by Bar Kokhba. The site of the nativity of Jesus was identified by St. Justin Martyr, a second century Christian apologist, as a manger in a cave close to the village. St. Helena then had a church or a basilica built upon that at the time of Constantine. And a church was remained there until it was destroyed by the Samaritans in the 6th century. It was later then built again by Justinian and much of what we see today is a Justinian framework. The town has been a monastic centre for centuries. Uh, St. Jerome built a monastery there and with the aid of Palestinian rabbis translated the Old Testament into Latin from the original Hebrew. In modern times, Bethlehem has been administered as part of the British Mandate of Palestine. From 1920 to 1948 and after the Arab-Israeli Wars of 48-49, it was annexed by Jordan and then after the Six-Day War in 67, it was part of the Israeli-occupied territory of West Bank. In 1995, Israel gave all control to the Palestinian Authority in time for a two-state solution.
Bethlehem is an agricultural market and trade town that is closely linked to nearby Jerusalem. For a long time, the town has been important as a pilgrimage and tourist centre, although in the decades following the Six-Day War, tourism and pilgrimage were frequently affected by the ongoing conflict. Several initiatives were undertaken in the early 21st century to encourage local economic development through renewed tourism by Western pilgrims. <laughs> The Church of the Nativity or the Basilica of the Nativity contains the most prominent religious significance to Christians of various denominations as it is considered the birthplace of Jesus. The grotto is the oldest site continuously used as a place of worship in Christianity and the basilica is the oldest major church in the Holy Land. It was originally commissioned by Constantine the Great a short time after his mother Helena visited Jerusalem and Bethlehem in 325. The site was then considered to be the birthplace of Jesus and the church which was built above it was dedicated on the 31st of May 339. It was probably destroyed by fire during the Samaritan result, revolts of the 6th century, possibly in 529 and a new basilica was built a number of years later by the Byzantine Emperor Justinian who added a porch and other bits and pieces. The Church of the Nativity while remaining basically unchanged since the Justinianic Reconstruction has seen numerous repairs and additions, especially from the Crusader period, such as two bell towers, which are no longer uh, visible, wall mosaics and paintings, and some of which have been preserved inside, which we will show you as we go along. Over the centuries, the surrounding compound has been expanded and today it covers approximately 12,000 square meters, comprising three different monasteries, Roman Catholic, Armenian and one Greek Orthodox of which the first two contained the bell towers built during the modern era. The silver star marking the spot where Christ was born, inscribed in Latin, was stolen by Greek monks in 1847, which might be have been a cause for the Crimean War against the Russian Empire. Since 2012, the Church of Nativity is a World Heritage Site and was the first to be listed by UNESCO under Palestine. Since 1852, the rights of the three religious communities are ruled by the status quo, which basically means the property rights, the liturgical use and the maintenance of the church are regulated by a set of documents and understandings. The church is owned by three church authorities, Greek Orthodox, most of the building and furnishings, the Armenic Apostolic and the Roman Catholic, each of them with lesser property. Just there, where the call to prayer is being recited, is the Masjid of Umar, um, where apparently when Umar came, he did not want to pray within the Christian church. He was allowed to pray in the Christian church, but he didn't pray in the Christian church because of not setting a precedent. And in order to not set a precedent, he prayed over there on the other side, which is just there, and that became known as Masjid al Umar. Right, I'm actually now going to be going into this very holy of sites for Christianity, known as the Church of the Nativity, where Jesus is reported to have been born. So I'm just going to head into this church right now, okay? Narrow entry, look at this. To get in, it's a very narrow, narrow entry. And as soon as I walked in, it smells like something from 2000 years ago. The smell in here is of frankincense and myrrh and all sorts. So here I am in the Church of Nativity. Um, it's very, very holy and respect the, the sanctity of this place where Jesus, the, the Spirit of God uh, and uh, the great monotheist, um, the Word of God um, that was born, who taught us how to love God and how to love human creation 
Um, so yeah, let's show you more of it. So now I'm just about to enter uh, this holy site and uh, I'm just about to now enter the very place where Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam Kalimatullah, Ruhullah was actually born um, and we know the story from Surah Maryam regarding this birth and this family and the blessings that this family has so let's have a look. This is the grotto of the nativity where Jesus is said to have been born. It's an underground space in the crypt of the nativity church. And it is situated underneath it, the main altar and is normally accessed by two staircases on either side of the chancel. The grotto is a part of a network of caves which are accessed from adjacent church of St. Catherine's. The tunnel-like corridor connecting the grotto to the other caves is normally locked. The cave is in the eastern niche said to be the place where Jesus was born which contains the altar of nativity. The exact spot where Jesus was born is marked beneath this altar by a 14-pointed silver star with the Latin inscription, Here, Jesus Christ was born to the Virgin Mary. It was installed by the Catholics in 1717, removed allegedly by the Greeks in 1847, and replaced by the Turkish government in the 1853. The star is set into the marble floor and surrounded by 15 silver lamps representing the three Christian communities. Six belong to the Greek Orthodox, four to the Catholics and five to the Armenian Apostolic. The altar of the nativity is maintained by the Greek Orthodox and Armenian Apostolic churches. The significance of the 14 points on the star is said to represent the three sets of 14 generations in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. First 14 from Abraham to David, then 14 from David to the Babylonian captivity, then 14 more to Jesus Christ. In the middle of the 14 pointed star is a circular hole through which one can reach in to touch the stone that is said to be the original stone that Mary laid on when she gave birth to Jesus. 
Roman Catholics are in charge of a section of the grotto known as the Grotto of the Manger, marking the traditional site where Mary laid the newborn baby in the manger. The altar of the Magi is located directly opposite from the manger site. In the Church of St. Catherine you will find the cave entrance points and underneath are these caves where over 2,000 or more bodies, skeletons and remains have been found and it is said it is Herod the Great or Herod the Tyrant more so who killed many because he was vying against Jesus uh, for the coming Messiah and he had this sort of competition which led him to kill so many people to prevent the birth of Jesus. So normally it takes an over an hour to get you to this location. Normally there's so many people here, um, worshippers, believers, coming here to see where this great prophet of God, um, Jesus, who will come back and bring justice with the Mahdi and kill the Dajjal. I mean, Jesus is no small prophet. And it's, it's a shame we Muslims sometimes don't fully reflect on this character that Qur'an has devoted so much to. Um, you know, in terms of what Jesus taught about love for human beings and the idea of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a rob. He nurtures, he, he, he nurtures human, his creation. And in that sense, the idea of father is not accurate, but there is the idea of rob within our tradition, which speaks about God nurturing human beings. And this is the very place where Jesus was born. This is... It's electrifying atmosphere in here. It's spiritually charged, and uh, let's just show you some more parts of this. Of course, but we'll Okay. Here behind the section where the believers pray. Here we have the priest, and uh, this is the priest who, who performs the services here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa amalakum wa insha'Allah. Assalamu alaikum ya Isa ibn Maryam. Rahmatullah wa kalimatullah. Look at the oranges here. Wow. Just walking in the streets of uh, Bethlehem. Look at it. Look how beautifully clean the streets are. Um, and the people are so hospitable. These are people who have um, so many difficulties, so many trials. I mean, they, look at all the shops are closed here. None of the shops are open. There's no trade going on or anything yet. It's still calm, it's peaceful. 
um, the streets are so clean and uh, the people are, are so hospitable um, gentlemen offering water here as free and and they see visitors that come to this place as people they 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 want us to visit and they want to sh show the hospitality it's it's not something which is fake or inauthentic there are genuine people who who just have a genuine love for everybody who comes here and because they themselves love this land everybody who comes to this land then they love them because of the just this overarching love for the land of the prophets the holy land and uh, it's a shame that it's uh, so politicized uh, we really need to move away from politics and start to humanize things but hey ho we're here for our spiritual uh, transformation and uh, absorb the sights and sounds and maybe at the same time you learn a thing or two and I'm sure